Hi, so uh, today I thought I would tell you about this painting that I have started working on, but I never finished it. I stopped painting it three to four months ago and I'm starting to think I won't ever finish it because I have moved on to so many other painting projects since. And uh, I thought if not finish it, we can at least try and fill in this white space and just call it finished because uh, I, yeah, I think I'm done with the painting. But along with that, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I always talk about something or the other about life in the background. And I thought I'd talk about self-love today because just cause, you know, I've been thinking a lot about self-love. It's, it's a very complicated matter and it'd be fun to just chat and paint and talk about self-love. So that's what we're doing today. All right, well, whenever we discuss a subject, we should start with the definition. So I will be going with that. What is self-love? Like someone who's, who loves themselves, appreciate their good parts and will, if they make mistakes, they're much more forgiving of them and they'll try to learn from them. Think of it this way. If you're pretty fixated on what you're bad at and you keep self-deprecating, you're not allowing room for the narrative that, hey, I can get better at this, why not? If I really want it, I can. And it's funny because I used to be that way and I still, in some cases, catch myself doing that. Self-love is really hard to do because many people were brought up to believe that they're not enough. Maybe it's, it's through an experience, maybe it was a bully, maybe it was a parent, maybe it was a really bad friend or a relative, maybe something horrible happened to them and that experience led them to associate themselves with only a unwanted presence. It's about taking up space as well, like not just physical space, but mental space. You feel like you're a burden and the opposite of self-love is feeling like you're a burden on others. Self-love is where like I'm enough for myself, but feeling like you're a burden on others means you feel like you're You shouldn't even take up even a little bit of space and that's horrible for someone to believe Have you heard of this quote hurt people hurt people like people who are insecure Always end up affecting others negatively around them How do I love myself? I <sighs> My self-love journey is, it's insane because I wouldn't say I necessarily had a great childhood, but it wasn't bad. It was good. We had sunny summers, kind of rocky winters, and it was just, it was chaotic, you could say. I wouldn't say I completely love myself right now. I think I need therapy, just like most people do. There's still a lot for me to work through. Growing up, I had literally no self-esteem. I used to think that I was annoying and I used to hate the sound of my voice and the way I looked and I was, you know, this dumb kid and other people were just born awesome. And I, I, somewhere in the back of my mind, I knew that was bullshit, but I think for the most of it, it was just me walking around a bit hunched and like, okay, like let's stay out of people's way. And if they hate us, it's the end of the world. If someone hated me, I would overthink that thing so many times. It, like, I would overthink about someone saying just one little thing for a week. It would hold so much space in my brain. And in that sense, I'm so proud of how far I've come. Oh, and that reminds me, self-love is also not needing anyone else to tell you that you're awesome and amazing for you to believe that. What I used to do is like, when someone complimented me, I'd be like, oh, that's great. And wow, I didn't know you thought of me that way, you know? And then in a week, I just go back to being like, wow, I wish someone told me that again. But self-love is when you don't need anybody to tell you that, but when they do, you receive it well and gracefully. And you're just like, hey, thanks. I appreciate that, you know? And self-love is also when someone says something harsh to you, or even if it's constructive, you don't take it the wrong way because you know whether you, if you did something wrong, then you know that you did something wrong. You're self-aware enough and you can correct it. But if you did something right, you will be like, all right, well, this is where I went right. If I went wrong, I'll actually look into it. I was really bad at taking feedback or dealing with people who were just not nice themselves. I kind of thought that self-love was like a lottery system. You're either born as someone who loves themselves or not. And I think that's incredibly dumb now. I just ended up accepting defeat, but now I know it's far from it. 
it's totally possible to learn to love yourself now and that is such a relief. It is a relief to know that there's always a chance for someone to work on themselves because imagine living life believing that you're born into the situation and there's no way out of it. That sounds very suffocating and claustrophobic of a thought. And the thing is, most people constantly hear the same message and they begin to believe it. Like, if you had a baby and you constantly told that baby that they have uh, big eyebrows, then that person will probably fixate on how big their eyebrows are. If life is just a consistent image of something negative, they're gonna grow up to associate themselves with that negativity. So I guess that's another reason. There's just a lot of bullies in my life and I look like an easy target. Ironically, I learned how to love myself through the horrible people I encountered. I'll give you an example. I've had, I've had like one or two exes. I've dated one or two people in my life before and one of them was my most recent ex. He was a really crappy person, not gonna lie but uh, he kept breaking up with me uh, and I used to have this fear of rejection so if someone broke up with me I'd like get into panic attacks or if someone even like minutely rejected me through a sentence like oh you know I don't think I want to hang out with you or something like that I'd freak out but like this guy he was literally my fear as a person he would reject me in every way you could possibly imagine he wouldn't say much nice stuff about me he would distance himself when I was the most vulnerable. He knew how to play my strings, which spot was my weakest, which spot was my Achilles heel. And this guy, he just kept breaking up with me. And the first time he broke up with me, I was a mess. I was in pieces. I called up my friend and I'm like, where am I gonna find an amazing guy like him ever again? And that's embarrassing and so cringe now that I think about it. That was my mindset back then. I was like, wow, nobody else is gonna love me. I just managed to finally catch this guy. I will never get another fish again. Yeah, I didn't even think he was mistreating me back then. We got back together eventually. The second time he broke up with me, it was still just as bad. Third time, a little less bad, but like I still hated myself. I freaked out and I'm like, damn, this is the third time I lost him. I'm doing something wrong. Fourth time, I was like, oh, okay, I'm getting a little used to this. Fifth time, I'm like, starting to get a little bored and around that time i started picking up reading psychology and philosophy really helped with my self-esteem six times seven times after a point i was exhausted but i kept going back because i was trauma bonded but that's like a whole other story i was afraid of rejection but he sort of exposure therapied me into being not at all afraid of rejection the idea of just going up to someone and being like hey i like you and then dating them and then them breaking up with me used to be terrifying to me but now it's like it's a part of life and I guess I have him to thank for that, uh, facing the fear of rejection. I sort of stopped fighting against the idea of, oh, everybody needs to like me and everybody needs to constantly think that I'm amazing and just be like, not everybody's gonna like me. That one sentence took off so much weight from my shoulders. Another really ironic thing about learning to love yourself is realizing that perfectionism is the thing you want to stay furthest away from because when you strive to be perfect in terms of maybe how you look or your personality yes you should strive to be as perfect as possible but expecting every single day to go perfectly or every single inch of your body to be perfect i, I used to believe that people who love themselves were always happy and it took so long for me to sort of admit it at first when i learned that not every day is perfect even for the most wealthiest billionaire with the happiest relationship or healthiest you could say people go through days where maybe someone was not kind to them it happens you know sometimes you digress even people with the most consistent habits don't stick to them they have slumps that's the word slumps Slumps are inevitable, they're just gonna happen. People who love themselves tend to go easier on themselves when they make the mistakes so that they have the headspace to move on and try to put all that energy into trying to correct that mistake and just ask themselves, hmm, what could I do not to do that again next time? And accepting that they're not perfect, but they're gonna try their best to get there, you know? And that's kind of the beauty of life. You're just, sort of leveling up 
the more you go. And the people who don't stop seeing life as this continuous phase of leveling up and learning and growing are usually the people who love themselves. I also found that little things you do for yourself also mean self-love. I do skincare for myself because I feel like my face, even though I used to hate it, I'm like, I'm gonna take care of it and try to just, you know, make it look as presentable as I feel it would look. Don't, I, I felt incredibly unfit and uh, I didn't like that I wasn't fit. So I thought I'd go to the gym and I've started doing that even though it's not completely consistent. But what I still struggle with is I, I think I have a little bit of social anxiety. I still think I need some external validation to talk to people. But yeah, I feel like where I lack is I am still insecure in terms of what I could bring to the table in a conversation. So I'm working on that. Another thing I'm very insecure about is the shape of my body. I'm not very proud of it, but I'm learning to be. The important thing to remind myself is that I'm working towards something that I've wanted for myself and I don't want to have to wait to be happy about myself. It's also so easy for people to just come up to you and say, hey, don't define your self-worth by how you look or how much money you make. It's easy to say that, but like, it's such a vague instruction. And there's not just like one right path, like, there's no formula. There is a sort of rough outline of what you should do to love yourself, but it's not easy. Like I said, you can't just be like, oh, I shouldn't define my self-worth by how much money I make. Maybe if you repeat it to yourself, it might help, like an affirmation, but it doesn't just happen on day one. And that's one thing I didn't used to understand. It takes months, even years to just sort of put it in your brain that you are enough some people don't feel like they are enough and it's not about accepting who you are for you are like how you are exactly sometimes self-love takes a little bit of work a common misconception that most people including myself had about self-love is you need to accept yourself for who you are like exactly how you are like right now this is me and i'm not going to change it a lot of people they do that but it comes across as really fake because they're only pretending to love themselves and the more that their insecurity shows up, the more they'll try to put on that shield of, no, I love myself, I'm perfect, but you know who's not perfect? You're imperfect. And that person will just project and again, just brings me back to the whole hurt people, hurt people quote. It's best not to pretend that you're perfect. It helps to fake confidence in conversations sometimes, but not arrogance. But instead of trying to pretend something you're not, which is perfect, nobody is perfect, what I could do is I could work on the things that I'm not so happy about so that when I do achieve them, I'll feel pretty great on the inside. Reinforcing the idea that I'm putting the work into myself and thus I care about myself and therefore I love myself. When you take care of your body, when you take care of your mind, when you allow yourself to just be like, let your emotions flow and find a healthy outlet, you're basically telling yourself, hey, I want to take care of you and I care about you and you're worth it. Also, kids are really good at self-love. They're kind of like a blank canvas. They're pretty new to the world. What the world does is it beats you down into this person that society just wants to mold and everybody has to look the same. There are some traits that kids have that you need to leave behind like insecurities or tantrums but there are some things that would be really nice to keep like innocence or curiosity and kids who are allowed the room to explore themselves and explore the world with gentle parenting are usually the people who grow up to love themselves the most because they stay just as curious about everything and about themselves and they're very reassured and they feel very safe and when you feel safe, you're prone to feel like you can take up space. Again, back to the space aspect thing. Kids take up a lot of space. They're like vibrating gas particles. And people who are rigid and very restrictive of themselves and others are like the molecules in this paintbrush right here. And it's great that kids are like the gas particle. It's great that kids are so free because they deserve to love themselves the most. But unfortunately, that's not the reality of it. Kids say a lot of things unfiltered, you know? They say what's on their mind. And people who love themselves also tend to be able to communicate 
very clearly what's on their mind. Obviously, there are some filters you have to put on as you grow up and learn. So yeah, kids are pretty unfiltered and very bold. And that's what self-love is, you know? You're bold, you're very sure of yourself, you know what you want, you're just free. You're not always carefree and there's you're not always gonna be like that, but you know you can be, you know? So, so there's a lot of things that come in the way of self-love, but then there's a lot of things you can do to learn to love yourself and just not give a crap about what the world thinks of you and just keep going at it. And yes, there's like challenges, 90 day challenge of self-love where you wake up early and you instantly get, hop into your workout. But the thing is that's not for everyone. So self-love just looks very different from pe for people. It can look like coding for most of the day for you and then cuddling with your dog. Or it could look like going out to the grocery store and then sitting down for a nice paint like I am. It could look like a night walk because you need to walk for your mental health. It could look like anything, you know, whatever you want it to be. As long as it's healthy and it's not hurting anyone, do whatever, dude. The world is your oyster. But yeah, that was like a pretty loose and formal conversation about what I think self-love is and where it comes from and what my views on it are. But uh, I am sort of quote unquote done. I filled in the gaps and I made some other changes. I didn't really feel like doing much else. There was supposed to be this really intricate shelf behind this is a restaurant called The Brewery. It's here in Barodra. But I didn't include their shelves, which had games and plants and stuff on it. So that's a shame. And I didn't end up making changes on my mom because, uh, I don't know, I feel like I'd make it worse today. Didn't really feel like it. So we're just sticking with this. This is my incomplete painting, which will probably stay incomplete until I decide to pick it up again. But I feel like that's not gonna happen for a while. So I thought I'd just, Finish it for the sake of finishing it, you know? That is all. So yeah, I hope that was fun for you and uh, bye.